worship you. That's what you made us for. To worship you again. To praise you. We will worship you again. His holy name, we will continue to worship him in the true beauty of his holiness. How wonderful it is to praise the name of the Lord! How glorious it is to worship him! God is faithful, God is good, God is great, God is love, God remains God. You know, when we look at all the wonderful things that God has done for us, surely we all have a good reason. We all have a blessed reason to glorify the name of the Lord Most High. Uh, a song that says, When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back. I will never return back. I will refuse to go back. Because when I see where the Lord God Almighty has taken me out from, and when I look at what God is where God is taking me, where God is leading me. And when I look at what God is doing for us, and the beauty of this all is that we all are seeing with our own very eyes how the mercy of the Father continually speaks in our life. God is love. God's, God's love is steadfast. It never ceases. It never ends. It never fails. It remains unfailing. It remains unending. It remains unceasing. It comes the way God has given and it stays. For God so loved us. Each time we usually say this, we are in this world. We're well, not part of this world, but now this world that God loves. We are the reason why we, 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 for God so loved the world. We, we, because we are here to represent God. We are here to tell people how great is the Lord. We are here to speak of the might, the power, the great resurrected state of, of our glorious master Jesus Christ, what he has done, what he is doing, and what is he, what, and what is this thing going to do in our lives? We are here to share that message. We are here to deliver that message. We are here to speak of that message. How great is the Lord. Sing with me. How great is the Lord. All the good, how great, how great is the Lord. Say, how great is the Lord. In all his goodness, God remains great. In all things, God remains great. And God is faithful. So tonight, blessed saints, we welcome you wherever you are, whichever continent, whichever country, whichever city, uh, wherever you are streaming, watching us from. Uh, Messiah, greetings to you. God's greetings to you. 
Uh, happy holidays to you and your blessed family. Uh, we are giving thanks to God. It is a month of thanksgiving with fasting and prayer. Uh, this is Apostle Kenneth the Christ, son of Prophet Sekodane. And we are here to give thanks to the Lord. We are here to glorify his holy name. We are here uh, to sing praises to his holy name. We are here to lift our voice, uh, to lift up our, our heart uh, uh, in worship, uh, to lift up our hands and, and sing praises to the Lord. Uh, sing praises to his holy name. The Lord is good and his mercy endureth forevermore. There is nothing, listen, there is nothing, there is no shortage uh, to the glory of the Father. It's the glory that can transform anything and anyone. So when, we, when everyone experiences the, the glory of the Father, life begins to get transformed. Life begins to get transformed. The oneness, the personality of whoever experiences God's gracious glory get get to what get to be changed immediately uh, uh, lazarus experienced the, the glory presence of the father immediately lazarus was transformed he was transformed he was dead in a moment and in a while he became alive and he lived he lived he lived and confirming to the word that the master our master jesus christ gave to the sisters when he said your cry it is not in vain your cry, it is not for us to, to death because you are crying that your brother is sick, that is facing death, that is facing weakness, that is it, it, it's almost at the dead, the dead bed. Uh, but Jesus Christ said to them, listen, that sickness, that sickness, it is not unto death, but unto the glory of God. So we are speaking of the glory of the Father, the glory that can transform anyone and anything. So get this and understand this. When we are giving thanks to the Lord God Almighty, we remain in the away of his glory. Now, when the Father, when our Master, Jesus Christ, when he gave thanks to God, he, the, the, the glory covered him, the glory covered him. In the multitude of many, many who are hungered, many who are thirsty, many who are, are their belly were are, 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 um, longing for food. They were tired, they were weary, they were they were longing for food. And Jesus looked at their faces and Jesus knew that hey, now there is no way that good news can penetrate into the mind of these people. Now they are hungered. Now their mortal body needs needs something to eat. Now Jesus had to thank the Father who has brought him into that knowledge, into that understanding. Jesus gave thanks to the Father and immediately gave thanks to the Father. He didn't pray. He didn't pray for the Father to give to, for the Father to. No, he has already done it. He has already done it from the teaching, from the teaching that he was giving to them. All those who are seated there, he was feeding them. He was feeding their life. That is why they never even want to leave the place in the first place. Now, a boy who brought his lunch forward. He came because the world, the message resonated in his heart. And the boy came to present his offering. The boy came to give to God. The boy came to give to God. And his giving was, was acceptable. His gift was acceptable. And his gift got multiplied because he was in, in the mood of thanksgiving. Listen, let's just say, it. never neglect thanksgiving. Never stop giving thanks to the Father. Never stop thanking the Father for what all the Father, for all the goodness and everything that the Father is doing for us. Now, get this. You may be in expectation. You may be in expectancy. You may be in, in the time of when you are about to, to get a major breakthrough. And all of a sudden, it's not happening from the way you have planned it or the way you have thought about it. That does not mean you shouldn't stop. You should stop giving thanks to God. Listen, giving thanks to God should not be based on condition. Many, many wants to give thanks to God when God does things for them. Jesus taught us how well it is for us and for our good to give thanks to God. Now, in John 6, before, before the miracle was performed, Jesus was teaching. And Jesus was teaching, he was doing the will of the Father. Remember, he said, the spirit of the Father is upon him. He has anointed him. He has anointed him, set him apart to deliver, to heal, to bring the good message. So it was, it was all about, it was all about the will of the Father, which is what giving thanks to the Father by doing what the Father has led him to do. So the good message he was sharing. Now, it's the good message has been shared. Many hearts has received. Many minds have received. Many has, has, has eaten the, the food that can never decompose. Now, for the 
for, for, for the manifestation of the teaching, it became a reality. For, for the manifestation of the teaching to, to uh, for, for, for the manifestation of the teaching to uh to be manifested in the in 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 a in a higher glory. Jesus now ask his disciples, where can we get a bakery? Where can we get where to buy food or bread for those who are here? And immediately, even knowing what was in their heart, Jesus knew what was in their heart. Jesus knew the reply they would give, but he still asked anyway. So see, if the teaching, if the miracle, if what he has been saying, if what they've been seeing, because they've witnessed, they've witnessed how many who were brought to him in the evening, how he drove what oppresses their life, which was what demon. Demon that oppresses, demon of darkness, demon of sorcery, demon of witchcraft, every evil manipulation that has withheld people, that has held down people, that has put many into bondage. In the evening, when they brought all who were demon possessed before him, with one word, he drove all the demon out from their lives. With just one word, with just one word, I want you to get this. Let's just say, I want you to understand it. With just one word, he drove all of it out. Now, who were there? Who were the? Who were, who were with him when he drove all of those out? His disciples, plus the seventy-two, who always followed him, who always accompanied him wherever he goes. They are always with him, and he still asked them for them to for, for for them to know if really what you've been saying, what you've heard. If it's making an impact, if it's speaking to your heart, as it, as the message spoke to the heart of the child, the boy who brought his, his lunch forward, the message spoke to his heart, the message resonated in his heart. As the boy presented what he had, the boy presented what he had. I, 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 want, I want to say that the, the Bible did not go on to tell us the story of that boy, which I believe that the story of that boy would have been a story for many, for, uh, to, to inspire many all the more. Because as little as he was, it is, it is also to confirm what Jesus said about the little ones. Jesus said, be like these little ones, but theirs is the kingdom. Be like these little ones. So as little as he was, his heart was, was open. His heart was open. He was not, he, he, he was not having uh, uh, the, the hunger from the, from the stomach. Rather, his heart and his mind was desiring, was open, was open to the message of the Father. So whatever the, whatever the, uh, whatever the Father was teaching on that faithful day, the, the child was receiving. The child was receiving. So he looked at his lunchbox to say, no, this can give me this life. As little as he was, he looked at his message. But get this, those who were much more older than him, our father, our master, Jesus Christ, ask them, where do you think we can get bakery or bread to buy for them? And what was the response? They said, hey, when Philip looked and he said, hey, master, hey. in order to feed this whole crowd, this multitude, we will need more than two plus years, not, not weeks, not even days, not months, two plus years wage, which is not going to be enough to contain the multitude of crowd. A child got the message. A child got the message and he gave thanks to God for blessing his life with the wonderful message that Jesus gave. Let's not withhold giving thanks to God because we are yet to understand what God is doing in our life. Let's not stop giving thanks to God when we get up in the morning. Some get tired because they say they don't have no, they don't have no reason to get up. Some say they are tired of getting up, looking forward to nothing. Who say there is nothing for you to look forward to? Who gave you that lie? Who fed you that lie? Who said to you that there is nothing for you to look forward to? Who said to you that it is over with your life? Who said to you that it is over with your story? He said, to whom has he been revealed to? So how do you go with the report of what situation that you are going through? Or, this, or, the, or you go with the report of what is presented to you? Remember, as a child of God, as a Christian, 
we do not go by what we see. We do not go by what we see. That's why our faith is our faith comes from Christ. The Jesus Christ has become our spiritual faith. Faith is the evidence of things unseen. We do not see yet we believe. You do not see yet you believe. You know in your heart that it will happen. You know in your heart that God preserved you. You know in your heart that God protected you. You know in your heart that God shared you. You know in your heart that God never forsake. You know in your heart. David never saw, but he believed in his heart. When he wrote, when he wrote about Psalms 23, he believed in his heart. He was writing, he, he wrote it from his heart. He said, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou is with me. For thou is with me. So he knew in his walking, whatever that rises itself against him, he knew that it can never be touched. This is a knowledge that sets a, a, a person free. This is a knowledge that sets people free. If you know that, look, evil existed because evil is a creation. We can't know, we can't say what God created is not existing. Evil is existing because it's a creation created by God. Created by God. Now get this. God has given you authority. So we has what? Authority. We have power. We have privilege over the works of his hand. So evil that was a creation that came from the work of his hand, we have authority over it. Now, if you have this knowledge that no weapon of the enemy, no evil weapon formed against you, forges against you, fashioned over your life, will prevail over your, over your life, you are set apart already. Already you are free. Already you are made whole. Already you are delivered. Because that knowledge set you free. The reason why many are perishing today is because of, of what? They lack knowledge. They lack knowledge. That's why many are perishing today. Many are dying today because they lack knowledge. Many are failing today because they lack knowledge. Many are falling today because they lack knowledge. Many could not reach their destination because they lack knowledge. Many could not reach the promise, the promised land because they lack knowledge. Many could not enter the open door that has already been opened because of what they lack knowledge. So failure comes upon people, upon a person because of what? Because of what? Lack of knowledge. That's why I say my people are perishing because they what? Because they lack knowledge. But God graciously gives. God graciously gives so that there won't be any lacking. God graciously gives so that there will not be any issue with lacking. Before we pray, blessed viewers, before we pray, I want us to quickly read uh, uh, the book of Psalms. Uh, the book of Psalms. Okay, Psalm 7. Psalm chapter 7. It says here, O Lord my God, in you I take refuge and put my trust. Save me from all those who pursue and persecute me and deliver me. Lest my foe tear my life from my body like a lion, dragging me away while there is none to deliver. O oh Lord my God, if I have done this, if, if there is wrong in my hands, if I have paid back, if you have paid back with evil, him who was at peace with me, or without cause have robbed him who was my enemy, let the enemy pursue my life and take it. Yes, let him trample my life to the ground and lay my honor in the dust cellar. First, and calmly think of that. Arise, O oh Lord. In your hunger, lift up yourself against the range of my enemies and awake and stir up for me the justice and the vindication that you have commanded. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered about you and return on eye over them. 
The Lord judges the people. Judge me, O Lord, and do me justice according to my righteousness, my rights, my rightness, my rightness, justice, and right standing with you, and according to the integrity that is in me. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the uncompromisingly righteous, the uncompromisingly righteous, those upright and in harmony with you. Listen to this, I repeat, verse 9. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Let every evil plan against you. Let every evil form fashion against you. Like, let it come to an end. Now, but establish, but now establish the uncompromisingly righteous. Those who never forsake thanksgiving. Those who never forsake to give thanks to God. See, establish the uncompromised righteous, those upright and in harmony. Listen, in harmony. In harmony. In harmony with you. You, 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 you sing your heart. You worship the King of glory. Even in time of trouble. Have you ever understand how Apostle Paul always, always sings, always say, uh, uh, say sing hymns to one another. In Philippians, you say sing hymns to one another. In, in, in fact, bless one another with, with songs of hymns and, and, and songs of praise. Even though there, are, there is trouble, even though you have been pursued, still remain joyful. Many rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. So it is the will of God in every circumstance. We give thanks to God. Now, listen. For you who try the heart and emotion and thinking powers are a righteous God. My defense and shield depend on God, who saves the upright in art. God is righteous judge. Yes, a God who is indignant every day. If a man does not turn and repent, God will wait his sword. He has strong and bent his huge bow and made it ready by treading it with his foot. He has also prepared for him deadly weapons. He makes his arrow very sharp. Behold, the wicked man comes.